everyone, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the greenhouse. Today marks the very first garden tour video of the 2021 season. My goal this year is to do a video each and every week so that I can bring you along with the progression of my garden from right now where the perennials are just starting to peek out of the ground. The ground is now thawed and everything's tilled and ready to plant. Well, we won't be planting for another month all the way until into October when we do our final harvest. I am pushing my growing season a little bit here. I started most of my tomatoes and my peppers about a week before I did last year. And my goal with doing that is to have my tomatoes be ready a little bit earlier. Even a week earlier would be good for me because we start getting really cold in the evenings by the middle of August, which really stunts the growth of tomatoes. So I thought if I pushed it a little bit on this end of the season, then it would benefit me towards the fall end of the season. Now, it's a little bit tricky to start that early because as you can see, my tomato seedlings are definitely ready to go into the ground. They're looking absolutely beautiful, super healthy. Roots coming out of the bottom here, but I'm not able to put them into the high tunnel for another two weeks. So I'm gonna have to limp these along till that point. I may even need to give them a little bit of extra fertilizer. Generally, I don't fertilize my seedlings, but this year, because I'm pushing it out a little bit, they may need a little bit of extra fertilizer just to make it through until I can plant them out. But I am super happy with the way that my seedlings are looking. They're way healthier than they were last year. Tomatoes are looking great. My peppers are also looking really, really healthy and lovely. So much better. They're already three times the size as my peppers were when I put planted them out last year and looking so much better. I mentioned this in my last video, but I think it bears repeating. The issue I was having with my um, pepper seedlings last year was a lot of yellowing and that was due to overwatering. So I'm really trying to let things dry out. I just watered these guys yesterday, but to dry out quite a bit um, between waterings, which seems to be having a huge impact on the health of my seedlings. I'm going to take you down from up there on the tripod and show you everything that I have growing in here. And then we will head outside and I'll show you what's going on in the main garden. Alrighty, we have tomatoes, tomatoes, and more tomatoes. I have pink Berkeley tie-dye in here, Arbison, which is a beefsteak tomato I grew last year, some sun gold, which come highly recommended. I have never grown, whoa, windy. <laughs> I have never grown sun golds before, but they come highly recommended. Manitoba bush tomatoes, which you guys know I love, doing very well. These ones were the ones that I got from Estonia and I never did find the package for this. So these are gonna be called my Estonia um, tomatoes. If you were the person that sent me these seeds, please do let me know the variety they are. Oh my goodness, look at that. Can you guys see that? There's flowers coming on that. So I am actually going to pinch those off because I do not want flowers forming on these just yet. Let's see, do we have more? Oh my goodness, look at that. There's more. Pinch those off too. This is one of the downsides of starting things a little bit too early. You guys know that I love me some flowers in my vegetable garden. So these are nasturtiums that are looking awesome that I'll be planting out into the main garden. The nice thing about nasturtiums is they are entirely edible and the um, deer don't like them. So if you have a problem with deer, they're a nice deterrent for that in the garden. This is a ground cherry, isn't it looking lovely? I planted four of these, I'm super excited about that. I think my kids are gonna love them. These right here, this little container right here, these are actually peanuts. The germination wasn't fantastic on these, but I did get a couple, and these will be going out into the high tunnel as well. And these cuties here are eggplant. I've really enjoyed growing these. I just think they're such a sweet looking little plant. I have not grown eggplant before, so we'll see how these do, but these will also be going out into the high tunnel. Now up here, I have a whole bunch of dwarf tomatoes. You see those ones up there? So these tomatoes are going to be going on my deck. And the purpose in growing these tomatoes for me is so that I can hopefully find a couple, I have I think 10 different varieties, but a couple of varieties that will work for growing in my grow room during the winter time, because I think it would be so awesome to have fresh tomatoes in the winter. So that's an experimental project. This is a tray of delphiniums here. 
lots more peppers, some more tomatoes up here. And as you can see, these leaves got a little bit of sun scald on them. And that is because when this vent is open, the sun shines down here and lands on these. They're climatized to it now. But if you're ever wondering what a sunburned plant looks like, that is what it looks like. Sweet peas up over here and just a random cabbage thrown in there for good measure. Normally I plant my onions by a set. And so an onion set is a little mini bulb that started in the fall and then pulled out of the ground and put into cold storage and then planted again in the spring. And then it starts growing and I've had great luck with those. This year I decided to try doing them by seed and I'm honestly not a huge fan. I mean, these onions look okay, <laughs> but not fantastic. And I planted 600 and I only ended up with 200 of them. So I did order some more sets. So I will do a combination of these starts and sets. These are rosemary over here and there's a couple lavender in there. They actually look very, very similar. Are both really, really slow growing. I'm super happy with my germination, um, but these are gonna take quite a while to actually get to the point where I can harvest them from. And I'm going to be selling, I'll probably only keep about four of these and then I'll sell the rest of them. Peppers, 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 and more peppers. I potted up the delphiniums the other day and they're looking so much better. And the same with the lupins are looking absolutely fantastic. Oh my goodness, I have to get in here and harvest off my chamomile. What I've been doing at the recommendation of one of you actually is to keep these all cut off so that these plants don't go to seed. I started these way, way, way too early. I will not do that again next year, although it has been fun to have some flowers and actually something that I can harvest. You can make tea out of these flowers and oh my goodness, they smell amazing. These little cuties are parsley and they were looking absolutely pathetic until I potted them up the other day and now they're looking really nice. This is English thyme and oregano over here, both looking really good. And down here, I actually started to put together my flower pots that will go on my porch. These are giant marigolds. And then these are the um, petunias that I started by seed back in February that are already starting to flower and they look so beautiful. So these will get much bigger and will fill out these containers. But these are gonna look so cute and cheerful out on my porch. And then down here we have all the brassicas. I keep them down here because it's much cooler. Um, there's broccoli, cauliflower, and this is that abundance kale that I always talk about. Sadly, this is a hybrid kale, so I'm not able to harvest the seed, so I only have another year worth of seed of this, which just is so sad because I can't find the seed anywhere anymore. More brassicas, more brassicas, and more bra brassicas. These ones were starting to look pretty sad, so I potted them up, but I'm hoping I can get away with not potting all these guys up. They'll be able to go out about a week before everything else can into the garden, so I'm hoping I can just limp them along in these trays and not have to pot them up. I have been able to remove all the extra plastic that I had hanging down over all of these um, probably about two weeks ago, I think now and just run my heaters in the main room. So the extra layer of plastic did make that be able to happen, which has made my job a heck of a lot easier. What the very full greenhouse means is that my squashes and my cucumbers and all of the things that I have to start this weekend, I usually start those about four weeks before I can plant out into the garden, four to five weeks, will be started indoors because I just don't have any room left in there. Now we're gonna head over to the forest garden. We've been doing quite a lot of grass pulling. I have, um, we call it cooch grass up here, but it's the grass with the long roots, the rhizomes that just spread everywhere. So we've been pulling that out of the forest garden. I'll give you a quick pan over. And for those of you that are new to my channel, I'll give you a quick rundown of what the forest garden is and its, and its intention. These rows are about 30 feet long and six feet wide. And I have one, two, three, and as you can see, it's kind of terraced on a little bit of a slope. And this is my perennial forest garden uh, inspired <laughs> garden. Yeah, behind this, it is a no-till perennial garden kind of based on some permaculture principles. I'm not a purist when it comes to just about anything, but I have tried to stick to some basic themes that kind of run with the permaculture idea. 
Basically, the idea is that there's a ground floor, a mid story, and an upper story of this garden. So I'll take you around right now and just show you some of the things that we have planted in here. I am a huge fan of flowers in the garden, as I mentioned in the greenhouse. So I have some tulips that are planted around here. And all through this area is actually echinacea that will be coming on its third year this year. And they did really, really well last year. I also have lots of poppies that come in through here as well as calendula. A rose bush. This is a current. And as you can see, it is just about to start leafing out. That's really exciting. And this one here is a gooseberry. I am new to gooseberry, so maybe, maybe somebody can give me some tips here. Should I go in here and cut out a lot of these skinny little branches that are here, or should I just let this go? This was, uh, I just planted this one last spring. So it did really, really well last year, but it just seems to me that it's going to be pretty difficult to harvest anything off of this when it is so overgrown this way. So let me know, should I get this pruned out? I have choke cherry in here, tons and tons of strawberries all over the ground floor. This is a pontatilla that I just planted here to add some extra flowers and look at that, it's actually leafed out already. That's so exciting. This has only been in the last couple of days that this has happened. This is a male sea buckthorn. So when you grow sea buckthorn, which is a medicinal berry, you need a male and a female. So this is my little male. And then over in this part of the garden, I have two females. So this one here, and then back over there, I have another female. These ones I planted from little tiny plants about this big uh, three years ago. So when I started this um, forest garden three years ago, and they have just gone crazy and they look fantastic. This is called a Bob Gordon elderberry. So there's one here, one here, and then one up over here. And I just planted these last year and they love this spot. They do like the ground to be moist. So I have taken some cardboard and put it around the tree and then spread this leaf mulch to help to keep the moisture nice and high for these elderberries. This is an absolutely beautiful ornamental grass and it grows about six feet tall and moves in the breeze in the summertime. It's so beautiful. I planted three more apple trees down here. Peonies here, irises over here, and then quite a few apple trees. So these are some, Nor this is a Norland apple, another Norland apple. This one I planted four years ago. So I planted this one before the forest garden actually went in. And that's kind of what dictated how I was going to do these beds is because I already had some fruit trees here. This is a Romeo cherry tree. I have two of them. This is a shrub type cherry tree, so it won't get huge. This little raspberry patch here I planted last year. And raspberries are also a plant that really likes moisture. So I did the same thing where I put cardboard down and then mulched on the top of it. My main raspberry patch is way back over here, but I had some extra raspberry canes, so I put them in here, and I'm really happy with the way that turned out. So that is it for the forest garden. There's still lots of other um, shrubs in there, but I'll show you guys those another day. This right here where all this green is, this is my parsnip patch from last year. My parsnips just didn't grow very well and they weren't big enough to be worthwhile to harvest in the fall. So I left them in the ground and every single one came up. So I have to go in and pull these out because parsnips are biennials, which means these will all go to seed. And I don't know if you remember last year when I let one go to seed from the previous year and collected the seed from it, I had millions of seeds like from one plant. So I certainly don't need 50 plants um, worth of seed. So I'll pull, pull all those out and if they are edible still, we'll eat them and if not, we'll cook them up and give them to the pigs. So just to give you an overview, so that's the forest garden that I showed you just a minute ago. And then this is my main vegetable garden up to the little greenhouse where we just were. And we'll walk up beside it because the garden kind of curves around behind it. So this is just from up above where we just were, the little greenhouse right here. And then the rest of the garden up here, my high tunnel is over here, my asparagus patch, my raspberry patch. And then over here, we did garlic for the first time, or at least for the first time on a larger scale. 
So we did a hundred foot row, and I think there's four rows in this row, um, and it's coming up, which is so awesome. See that little tiny baby garlic? So we've mulched with leaf mulch that was from our yard that we just left on the ground over the winter. There's another one right there. So that is it for the main garden area. We'll go down and check out the high tunnel once I get that all set up and ready to go and we'll talk more about that. So now we'll bring you up to the last garden that we have here on the ranch. This was the new garden that we did last year that was for the corn and potatoes. This garden here is about 50 by 30. I'm gonna be doing all of my squashes in this patch. So it'll be a giant sprawling mess of squashes. Um, I try not to plant my potatoes in the same place two years in a row, so those will be going down in the main garden this year, and squashes up here. I'm going to show you these two cutie pies. Hi ladies! This is our outdoor rabbit tractor. Aren't those two the cutest? These are lion head rabbits. Hello ladies, how are you? You guys need some more bedding in here, don't you? So the horse training is going well up there, which is exciting. And we are gonna head back. And you got a little pig, didn't you? Quenza lost her first tooth. <laughs> She's very excited about it. Um, we're gonna head down to the house now. What are we having for dinner tonight? Spaghetti. Chili. Aww. <laughs> Not spaghetti. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye. It's very cold. It is cold out here, isn't it?